Hey you guys, Matt Allen here. Welcome back to Tactical Bass and today we're talking everything you need to know about swim jigs. Fishing a swim jig is an awesome technique. If you haven't tried it, it's definitely something you should give a try this spring. Uh, it has all the same benefits as fishing a swim bait, both a big swim bait and a finesse swim bait. Uh, it gives you that full profile, gives you that great tail kick, really natural movement in the water, but it, it packs in a bunch of extra things too. Uh, the biggest of which is secondary movement, right? Because a swim jig has a skirt on it. So when done properly, that skirt will move and pulsate in the water and add secondary movement. Secondary movement is something that real fish have that swim baits do not, right? A swim bait has this big tail kick. A real fish in the water has its tail kicking, its fins moving, its gills opening and closing, scales glistening, all of those extra things. That's secondary movement that a typical swim bait cannot imitate. A swim jig stands in that gap. It gives you great movement, great profile. It also gives you secondary movement that imitates those other things. It's also a more weedless option and it ha typically will have a better hookup to land ratio than a bear swim bait will because that weed guard will provide back pressure and hold a hook in place. There are a lot of reasons to throw a swim jig. That said, not all swim jigs are created equal. What I want to do today is simplify it for you. Uh, but as I say that I have six options sitting here that I want to talk to you about, but they're all for different scenarios. It's not that you need all of these baits or all of these trailers. It's about listening to what different swim jigs are for and finding the one, I'll describe them, you find the one that best fits the way that you fish or the places you fish, and then just take that one or those two and run with it. Because it really, can be a very simple technique. Uh, swim jigging is not complicated. Now, there are a lot of subtle things. You'll find people that will talk about the Alabama shake. You'll find people that fish 50 different crawdad trailers on the back of swim jigs, all sorts of different things. If, if you wanna learn about those things, I'm not your guy. I fish swim jigs with swim baits on the back of them. You could put a period on the end of that. A fish them with swim baits. I really don't do much of that other stuff. Almost never. I mean, 99% I fish a swim jig with a swim bait on the back, but it's all about pairing the right bait, the right trailer, the right swim bait to the right head for the job. And today I'm gonna to teach you how to do that. Let me give you just a, a quick bit of history because I feel very strongly uh, that I can speak boldly on the subject matter of a swim jig. And here's why. Some of you know this, many of you don't. This is the Dirty Jigs California Swim Jig. See that giant heavy hook in there? It's called a no-jack hook. Kurt, the previous owner of Dirty Jigs and myself, came together and built, I'm dating myself here, the first heavy wire swim jig ever on the market. Swim jigs used to be done with medium and light wire hooks. And there's great situations for those and we're gonna get to that. But no one had a true heavy wire swim jig. Fact check me on this. We literally built the first one ever. Now there are dozens of companies that make them, but that all followed suit and came later. We filled a niche and the reason why was Kurt, a good friend of mine, wanted me to throw swim jigs and it was on the California Delta uh, and I kept bending them out on giant fish and just, we kept going back and forth. I need a stronger swim jig. He still needs it to do different things. We went back and forth and ultimately designed the California swim jig, the first heavy wire swim jig ever made. And that changed the course of things. And that history is important because you want to know 
how we got here in the first place. I mean, take Paul Elias, right? We're going back to the 80s. If Paul Elias in a classic in the 80s had not decided to get down on his knees and kneel and reel a crankbait all the way through that entire tournament and win the Bassmaster Classic, no deep diving crankbaits would exist today. The fact that he had to get down and stick a rod in the water and reel to get a few more feet out of his crankbait created the need for deep diving crankbaits, right? That's how the industry progresses. So I'm very proud of the fact that we built the first heavy wire swim jig because from that has come an entire category and something that should be in almost every boat today. All right, let me jump down off of my soapbox. We'll quit the history lesson, uh, but I wanted to give you a little bit of background because I have very strong opinions about swim jigs, but they're founded in facts. They're founded in decades on the water throwing swim jigs. So first off, I wanna talk heavy wire, heavy hook style swim jigs. And I've got three of those for you. Then we'll talk finesse swim jigs to wrap this thing up, okay? Now, as I describe these heads, because right now I'm just talking baits, but as I start to talk about the heads, you're going to understand how to use them, where to use them. See, a swim jig is all about profile and getting fish to commit. A swim jig, because of its weedless nature, can be fished virtually anywhere. You can fish it in laid down trees when the water's up. You can fish it in and around grass. A lot of baits need to be fished around grass, right? You fish the lanes through grass in the spring and the summer and the fall. A swim jig can go right in there and plow through grass. We're gonna get to that. But again, understanding the different styles is everything. So a heavy wire swim jig, pretty self-explanatory. It has everything to do with catching big ones. You don't wanna hook a giant fish on a swim jig and get bent out. I've lived that over and over and over again. That's how we developed the California swim jig. This is a California swim jig. This is a dirty jigs swim jig. And this is a no jack swim jig, okay? Let me start with a swim jig and a no jack swim jig. A swim jig, well here, let's flip it this way first. They both have the same head, okay? Swim jig, no jack swim jig. See that rounded but pointed head? These swim jigs are designed for catching big fish in heavy cover. I, I love to throw them, I throw both of them a ton when I'm in Florida fishing those grass flats. Sometimes I'll be using them fishing over the top of hydrilla or fishing lanes in hydrilla or bumping through hydrilla. Sometimes I'll take them in those giant reed fields and just throw them back in that stuff and just work them through. Steady reel and they'll just hunt and move and bump their way through. Again, I said it again, steady reel. I don't do any of that rod shaking. I don't do any of that stuff. I believe very firmly that if you pair the right trailers to the right bait, you don't have to do any of that. The vast majority of people that are doing it are using trailers that don't give the bait enough action on their own. But the right trailers exist and we will get there. So you've got this style of head, which is fantastic for cutting through grass, okay? So these are the most weedless. Now the difference between a swim jig and a no-jack swim jig. I actually told you the wrong one was the wrong one. The shad one, that's the swim jig. The black and blue, that's the no-jack swim jig. Now that I'm looking at my hooks, that's how similar they are. They're literally identical. The difference, even the size of the hook is the same. The difference is the wire thickness of the hook. The no jack is significantly thicker than a standard swim jig, significantly stronger than a standard swim jig. Now, I throw a standard swim jig a ton, a ton. 
And the reason why is I don't need quite as heavy a line to set it. So as you're deciding between a standard swim jig and a no jack hook, here's what you need to decide. Do you throw your swim jig in places where visibility is an issue, i.e. I might be throwing it on 50 to 65 pound braid, but I'm probably using somewhere between a 15 to 20 to 25 pound mono or fluoro leader because of visibility. If visibility is an issue, you throw the swim jig. If visibility is no issue whatsoever, you're not using a leader, straight braid, all the way in the thick stuff, in the jungle, that's how you fish, no jack, all the way. It's that easy to decide, okay? So one head shape, two hook sizes. Next we come to the California swim jig. Totally different head shape. Still pointed, still pointed. That's to split grass but nowhere near as smooth as the standard swim jig or a no jack swim jig. That is because I want the California swim jig to catch in the grass. Completely different animal. Again, no jack hook in this one also. So exact same hook as the no jack swim jig. But the California swim jig, we designed this as a grass busting swim jig. It will go where no other bait will go, except maybe a punch rig. But a punch rig is going down and back up. This is coming through. So here's the difference. Because there's a time and a place for a swim jig, there's a time and a place for a California swim jig. Here's how I decide. If I'm trying to fish over the tops of the junk, I'll fish a swim jig. If I'm trying to split toolies, like weave through toolies, reeds, bulrushes, cattails, whatever you want to call it, because these baits are so weedless that you can literally send that bait back there out of sight, right? Take a swim bait profile, throw it out of sight in the reeds, hold that rod tip up and start a steady retrieve, and it will find its way back to you. It's amazing how weedless these things are. So if you're in that situation, swim jig. If you're fishing the lanes in the grass and you just, you might catch here and there, but you want to get right through it, swim jig. Needle grass, the little tiny, that's what I call it, the little tiny guys that stick up out of the water and you want to weave through that, swim jig. Here's the California swim jig. If there's hydrilla mats and instead of wanting to go around them or over them, you want to go through them, California swim jig. Here's the deal. You take a half to a three quarter ounce California swim jig. The grass clumps. I'm, th I'm thinking late spring, early summer, that grass starts getting thick, right? You get clumps on the outsides. You get these huge mats of grass, but on the outside, it starts breaking up into individual clumps. We all know, or you're finding out right now, that the giants often take the outermost clumps. The higher the sun, the better. When the sun is low, those fish will come out of those clumps and they'll patrol, they'll hunt, they'll do their thing. But when the sun gets high, they suck right inside those grass clumps. The farthest out grass clumps, they'll be in them. No other bait goes in there, again, except for a punch rig. It comes down vertically. A guy throwing a crankbait, He's running the outside. Guy throwing a spinnerbait outside or over the top. Guy fishing top water, he's fishing nearby it. The guy who's worming can't get inside. He's just fishing around the edges. You take a California swim jig, you throw it right over the center of the clump. You swim it right up in there until it gets hung up. And when it gets hung up, you hit it hard. Hard and down into the side and you bust that grass clump. These fish, see a thousand baits. They never see a bait come right into their house and rip a hole through it. It is a completely different presentation. The amount of giant fish I have caught while busting clumps of grass with a California swim jig, off the charts. It is such a deadly technique. 
Again, I throw anymore. I used to only throw a California swim jig. It took me years to find the value in a swim jig and a no jack swim jig. These days, I throw a standard swim jig the most because I fish a lot of places where I'm winding through cover. A lot of like shoreline grasses and I'm just winding through it. But when I see those grass clumps, the California swim jig designed a long time ago is still incredibly unique and so special today. Now, we understand the jigs, let's talk trailers. For these big swim baits or for these big uh, swim jigs, I basically have three trailers that I use. Uh, no particular order. So Gambler, the Gambler Easy, not the Big Easy, the Gambler Easy, the Easy Swimmer. I use two colors. I use Gold Rush, which actually there's, they're on baits already. This is Gold Rush. It's like a June bug and a green pumpkin with green and gold glitter in it. It's an amazing bluegill profile completer, okay? So if I want a bluegill profile, you know, like an Alabama brim, I'll put that on the back of it. That gold rush, it just fills out that profile. The other one is that black shadow. That's that black and blue. And I love that. I mean, I love it. On the back of a black and blue swim jig. Be that a California swim jig, a standard swim jig, doesn't matter. These full profile swim jigs, that black and blue on the back is a fantastic bait. Now, the deal with swim baits is it's very difficult to find baits that move your swim jig properly. The Kitek, standard Kitek, 4.8. I I will be the first to admit, I've caught a pile of swim jig fish with a Kitek and some big ones. But I'm telling you right now, that wide tail kick that it has is not the best profile for a swim jig. I'm not saying it won't work. In some situations, it will. I've done it countless times. I've caught a lot of fish doing it because I didn't come out prepared and I'm trying to piece something together in my boat. I grab a Kitek and I've got them with me and I do catch fish on it. It will work, but it is not your best scenario. The three, again, the first one that I really like is that Gambler. I throw that in Florida a lot. Why do I throw it in Florida? Because when you're in Florida, everybody tells you to throw Gambler. If you don't throw Gambler, you're wasting your time. Well, I spent a bunch of time trying to prove that wrong and now I throw Gambler. How about that? It's that easy. Seriously, when I'm in, when I'm in Florida, I throw those profiles a lot. Easy Swimmer in one of those two colors. That's what I use that for. Next one. This is the Exxon Swammer, the 5.5. They call it the Mega Swammer, but it's just the 5.5 Swammer. But I don't use the entire bait. I cut it about there. I leave just the front part of that head section in there. Let me rip it. About like that, okay? I started using this one this year and I love it. It's a great, great swim bait. This is the green pumpkin blue. And again, it pairs beautifully to any of my bluegill profiles or bluegill colors. I mean, it looks good. I pounded them on this color this year. This color, this bait. The value of the Swammer. So the Gambler is a very durable bait. It's reliable, it just catches them. I can't explain the whole Gambler Florida thing. It is a thing, those fish eat it. Outside of that, the Swammer. The benefit of the Swammer is that this swim bait has a ton of body roll, a ton of rock, okay? And in the 5.5, when I shorten it up, even up to like a half ounce swim jig, it will still really get that body rocking. Because what you're going for here are swim baits that will cause your bait to roll or will cause your skirt to pulse. 
Either way, you're getting the secondary action. So the Swammer, and again, the particular one that I've really liked is that Green Pumpkin Blue, has worked really well for me with my bluegill profiles. The other one, this is my, my standout number one favorite big swim jig trailer. This is a River to Sea D Walker, specifically the D Walker 120. That's the bigger one. The D Walker, it's a large profile on a swim jig, right? Nothing small about it. This bait is super durable. It's made out of a very rigid plastic. It has a ton of movement. Uh, when you see this bait by itself on a swim bait hook, I mean, it's, it's rocking this way, it's rocking this way. It has so much movement, it's incredible. When you put that onto a swim jig, same deal. It's rocking, it's rolling, tons of movement. That skirt is working. It's incredible. It pushes so hard that you, I won't even fish it on a three eighths. On a three eighths, it's too much movement. It messes it up. But for a half to a three quarter, a half, five eighths, three quarter ounce swim jig, anywhere in there, that bait is the deal. That D Walker will get that entire bait pumping and moving on its own. Again, the value here is that you can take those baits and instead of doing this stuff while you're trying to reel and driving yourself crazy all day long, you just... That's it. The only time you're even going to see me pop it is to clear it of grass. I get it hung up in grass, I pop it free. That's it. So much easier on you all day long and the fish catching goes up. The profile is right. The movement is right. It's super natural in the water and the fish blast it. The only other heavier profiled swim jig that I'll use, this is the Mega Bass Uoze Swimmer. The only time I pull this one out, the big difference here, hook wise, similar wire to the Dirty Jig Swim Jig, but a size smaller. But what makes this jig stand out is that it's got a blade on it. It's an underspin. So that guy, I'm gaining the benefits of a, a swim bait, the benefits of a swim jig, and the benefits of an underspin. Sometimes water's clearer, but I get that afternoon chop on the water, that blade will make a difference. So anytime I'm swim jigging, I have this Uoze swimmer with me, either in a shad or a bluegill profile, uh, depending on what I'm after. Because the benefit of, another benefit of a swim jig is that profile matches better to some bait fish than a standard swim bait. Like a 2.8 Kitek looks like every little tiny minnow in a lake, right? It just does. It does a fantastic job. But it's a terrible imitator of a baby bluegill. Baby bluegill are taller. So are threadfin shad, gizzard shad, shiners. Those are all larger, taller profiles. A swim jig in the water, working properly. If you put the wrong trailer on it, it all goes away. That swim jig comes through the water, that skirt lays down flat like this, it sucks down to the bait, and you just got a paddle tail, just like any other swim bait. But when you do it right, that skirt puffs up, and you get a full profile out of it. It's a much better profile, a much better shape to imitate shad, shiners, and bluegill, larger panfish. So again, it's just that one more thing that makes it stand out from the crowd, that makes it even more natural, even more realistic. And then when you get that chop on the water, that blade can make a difference. So far, huge subject. We've narrowed it down to just a handful of jigs and literally three trailers. I think we're doing pretty good so far. Now I want to talk finesse swim jigs. That's the other end of the spectrum. Even better here. Two baits, two trailers, that's it. 
if you saw how this started, I mean, my experimenting over the years of swim jigs is just boxes stacking up, right? I have tried it all. Not all jigs are created equal. Some have garbage hooks. Some don't have the right head shapes where the head shape won't come through the grass. It'll hang up in the grass or it'll hang up. It'll come through grass, but it'll hang up in timber, right? There's all these different things that come into one bait being better than another. But the biggest thing for me is a bait that gets that incredible secondary movement. And that starts with the right jig and ends with the right trailer, the right swim bait. So talking finesse, there's a time and a place to swim jig with lighter wire hooks, right? Clear water, uh, parts of the country that have smaller fish, pond fishing, fishing almost anywhere in the entire Midwest, um, fishing highland reservoirs, fishing lowland reservoirs, but they have smaller fish in them, fishing spotted bass, um, chasing smallmouth, because not every smallmouth is in cl crystal clear water in the Great Lakes, right? Some smallmouth live in muddy water, some smallmouth live in places full of cover, uh, but there's a time and a place for those smaller profiles and lighter wire hooks. This, so I'm, I've narrowed it down to two, and I'm very specific about these two. If you're going to try them, trust me on the components. Keep them paired up, because if you take this trailer, put it on this swim jig, doesn't work, and vice versa, okay? This is a Dirty Jigs Finesse swim jig. Notice how thin the skirt is compared to the others. Way thinner skirt. It's because they take out all the inner strands. So it's only half of the strands. See, all the inside strands are gone. There's none there. It's just the outer strands. The result is that it puffs up even better if you pair it to the right bait. I've got this guy paired up to a 3.5 Storm Largo Shad. Not the three, not the four, the 3.5. Just trust me on this. That exact pairing, it doesn't matter which weight you go with on the swim jig, okay? Because this is on one of the lightest weights and it's still a dream. This pairing, that Largo Shad, I leave the little piece of plastic here at the tail because you can take that out to mute the action. Don't do that, leave it in. This pairing, I would argue, is the best swimming swim jig I have ever seen, period. It's incredible. Uh, now, it's lighter wire. It's actually the exact same hook that's in the finesse football jigs that we like to fish all winter. So I would typically pair this up with 10 to 12 pound line. I mean, you can throw heavier line, but you don't wanna pull on them any harder or you'll bend that hook out. But 10 to 12 pound line fighting one to five pound fish, you are good to go. This profile, the skirt is standing out away from the swim bait and the entire skirt is working while that swim bait is back there doing its thing. This is the finest example of the right jig paired to the right swim bait, creating perfect, perfect secondary action that I've ever come across. Now, how do I follow that up, right? Check this one out. This is the Missile Baits Mini Swim Jig. This little mini, has a heavy wire hook, it's just small. So you can throw it on 10, 12 pound line, but you could also throw it on 15 to 17 pound line, right? You can actually lean into them because it's still a stout hook, even though it's small. So you're creating smaller profile. So in my mind, I'm thinking smaller thread fin shad up in the grass, that's my bait. Um, targeting, bass that are really shallow eating baby bluegill. That's my bait because this isn't always the right size to imitate a bluegill. Sometimes you need a smaller size to imitate little bluegill. It's just a downsized profile, but still heavy wire. This bait has a thin cut skirt. 
paired to the wrong trailer, a thin cut skirt has no body to it, uh, meaning it's less rigid on its own. So it's just gonna glue down to the swim bait and have no action in the water. This is a swim jig that with the wrong trailer, you would have to shake to get it to work. But paired to the right trailer, this is an Exxon Swammer. That's the electric shad color, but that's the 3.5, not the four, the 3.5. That missile mini swim jig paired to a 3.5 swammer, again, is remarkable. Remarkable. Where the Dirty Jigs finesse swim jig has that perfect pulsing skirt better than I've ever seen before. This one has the best rock that I've seen out of any small profile swim jig. The skirt will get going and the head will rock. When, when I'm throwing it out there and winding it back, I can see the weed guard, right? Because the weed guard from above looks white. I can see the weed guard coming at me through the water, rocking left and right. The action is primo. Either one of these, you cannot go wrong. They're fantastic profiles and they are fish catchers. So, I think that that is probably the fastest I've ever plowed through the swim jig subject and the least number of baits we've had to talk about. Uh, I really, over the years, just continue to narrow down and narrow down and narrow down and try and find very specifically the right trailer for the right jig for the right situation. So what you need to decide is if you need a full size swim jig or a finesse swim jig. That's your first decision. After you've decided that, you need to decide how you fish it around cover. Is this a bait that you're throwing through edges of wood up on the shoreline? Is this a bait that's just coming through shoreline grass? Are you fishing in a place where busting hydrilla makes sense to you? Are you fishing a place where you're fan casting around scattered reeds or thick reeds? That's how you're going to decide the right swim bait or excuse me, the right swim jig head. And then after that, it's just pairing it right up to one of the better swim bait options. It really is that simple. So a handful of baits or a handful of swim jigs, handful of swim bait trailers, but you don't need them all. Take the ones that fit you best. And again, in the video description, I'll link the exact baits, the exact jigs, my favorite size, my favorite colors, you know, like really good shad imitator, like tactical shad. That's one we designed years ago. The right color for a bluegill imitator, right? I'll give you a couple of options for each one. Uh, and then the right swim baits as well. And I'll give you my favorite colors and the exact sizes for those swim baits too. The last piece of the puzzle is the rod and rods are very specific for this. Uh, I, I didn't even bring my rods with me. I forgot them. Uh, but the, Finesse swim jigs, you could throw that on almost anything, right? You could throw that on a, from a seven foot medium or medium heavy up to like a seven five medium or medium heavy. You could even go down to like a six ten, honestly. Um, you could fish it on almost anything. You could fish it on straight fluoro if you're on clear water. You could fish it on braid to leader um, if you've got cover in the water. And, and even this one, I mean, you could fish this guy with that stouter hook on straight braid, no problem. Uh, so not a big deal for the finesse swim jigs. For the standard swim jigs, that's a different deal. So like the Uoze swimmer or a standard swim jig, I'm going to fish those on the Mega Bass Brailist. That's my rod, it's my jig rod, right? You all know that, that is my favorite jig rod. Uh, that is also my favorite swim jig rod for all the same reasons. Uh, it loads really well through the midsection. One, it's sensitive. Two, it loads really well through the midsection. And as a result, when I load up on those fish, I hit that backbone, I stick them, but that rod is actually bowed up on them really good. And it's very hard for those fish to throw it. A standard jig on the bottom, swim jig up in the water column, doesn't matter. The way I fight the fish is the same. So hands, down that Mega Bass Brailist is my favorite rod to fish a swim jig. The one other is if you're throwing a no jack swim jig 
or a California swim jig, I finally found a favorite rod for that because I'm always trying. And for two years now, I've been using the same rod for it and I'm so happy with it. I've caught countless fish. Hookup to land ratio is really good. Now I'm talking either fish in like 25 pound liter or fish in straight 65 pound braid, right? True power fishing hitting them as hard as I can, winching them out of cover, flipping those fish into the boat, true heavy duty power fishing. The right rod for the job is the Shimano X Pride, the 7.6 Extra Heavy. I have not found a better rod than that for winching those fish. Uh, that rod has, well, I mean, it's an X Pride, right? So the price is right. And for the price, you get a rod that's like featherweight. It weighs nothing and it's super sensitive. And then that extra heavy, I mean, it's a pool cue. When you go to hit them, you break those fish. Like it, you hit them hard, uh, which is the right thing when you're trying to horse big ones out of and from around cover. So again, I'll link those rods and the reels and the line, everything I use in the video description as well. But I hope this helps you. It is a subject I'm very passionate about. Uh, it's one of the few things in bass fishing that I feel some ownership of, right? Uh, I think it's really neat that we designed a bait to fit a, a niche for me. I needed a stronger swim jig and it has opened up over the years into an entire category that basically every major company has taken a piece of. I think that's awesome. Uh, but the swim jig is a remarkable bait. It will help you catch more fish in a lot of situations. Uh, and if you haven't tried it, you should add it to the arsenal. If you enjoyed the video, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and we'll talk to you soon.